Beneath the waves is a mysterious world that takes up to 95% of Earth's living space. Only three people have ever reached the bottom of the deepest part of the ocean. The deep is a world without sunlight, of freezing temperatures and immense pressure. It's remained largely unexplored until now. Of 4,290 meters. As a species, we've always explored. It's just part of our DNA to walk over the next mountaintop and take that risk and learn something new. Now we're just starting to really explore the last frontier, which is the ocean, at the same time that we need it. Cutting edge technology is enabling a new generation of aquanauts to explore deeper than ever before. If you think for a moment that everything's been found, that there's nothing left to do, here's a place where it hasn't happened. Roger that. They are opening up a whole new world of potential benefits to humanity. The risks are great, but the rewards could be greater. From a vast wealth of resources to clues about the origins of life, the race is on to the final frontier. The Deep. The Okeanos Explorer, the American government's state-of-the-art vessel, designed for every type of deep ocean exploration, from discovering new species to investigating shipwrecks. On board, engineers and scientists come together to answer questions about the origins of life and human history. When I was a boy, I wanted to be an astronaut. Instead, I've been in submersibles as an aquanaut down to the deepest depths. Look at this, I'm on a, on a ship just off the coast of Hawaii playing with underwater robotics. I mean, to me, that's, that's just awesome. Today, the Okeanos is on a mission to investigate the wreck of a World War I submarine. Copy, back on deck air. Engineer Bobby Moore is part of a team who has developed the technology for this type of mission. So we go through, check all the nuts, bolts, uh, hydraulics, oil, everything, make sure everything works as it should. Because uh, we don't want to get down to the bottom of the ocean and find out things aren't working. We are hands-on involved in these vehicles from start to finish. I mean, when we need a new part, we design it. When something breaks, we fix it. When it comes to going out on the ship and operating it, we're the pilots. The Deep Discover, a remote operating vehicle, is equipped with 20 powerful LED lights and designed to withstand the huge pressure four miles down, equivalent to 50 jumbo jets stacked on top of a person. This vehicle is, is equipped to handle all sides of deep sea exploration. These are brand new cameras that we got and they're just phenomenal. We get detail that you couldn't see in a man submersible through a porthole. Yeah, that looks good. Deck is clear. Deck is clear. Copy that, we're good, we can proceed. Uh... In the control room, leading the expedition, is Jim Delgado. Yeah, this is awesome, guys, just keep it up. Once the chief scientist mapping the Titanic, Jim views deep sea exploration as a whole new enterprise. What we're doing is tapping into the final frontier. Beneath the ocean, I can boldly go where no one's gone before. I can seek out new life, as well as evidence of past civilization. Okay, drop in. Roger that. 40 minute dive. We can proceed uh, when you guys are ready to drive. Here we go. Did you bump my uh, sonar in? It's at 30, you want it closer? Yep, one more notch, please. 20. Copy. Thank you. Approaching target. Copy that. The current looks like it's coming north to south. Do you want to 
maybe bump me in 10 meters. We're approaching the stern. Look at that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, we are now have the submarine in sight. We are at the stern. On the starboard side. Okay, we are on the site of S-19, World War I vintage submarine, scuttled in 1938. When you see a ship at the bottom of the ocean, when you understand the human stories behind it, it reminds us that this is the story of all of us. Bearing 090 degrees, speed decimal two. So I'm seeing a fair amount of marine worms growing. These wrecks are time stamps for us in terms of what the ocean does to shipwrecks, how it works as a platform for new life, for habitation, uh, colonization by marine species. Move initiated, that's a good copy. Thank you, Bridge. Pop sign. Do you see that round structure? This? Yeah. Let's zoom in on that, if you don't mind. It is a plastic plate, dinner plate. So there we have it again, modern trash. I can't think of a place I go where I don't see modern trash. Everywhere. OK, we're good here. We can keep going. While the crew of the Okeanos send robots to investigate the deep, some of their fellow scientists prefer a more hands-on approach. Dr. Greg Stone is a world-leading marine biologist with over 8,000 hours under the sea. He has been exploring the abyss in person for 30 years. We still have never been able to replace the experience and what a person can learn when they are in a submarine at depth looking out the window. As you go down, you know, you start brightly lit day like so you go down into a twilight zone, and it's like twilight, and the animals are there, some are looking through the porthole, and you look down, and it's darker and darker and darker. It starts to get cold, too. And then you get below twilight, and you're in the perpetual dark zone. It hasn't seen the light of day for billions of years. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's about four to one now. It's like space exploration, almost. You know, we're going where no one has gone before. That's what I love. And you end up with a very uh, interesting and rich ecosystem. Oh, wow, Dumbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. OK, here we go. We got something coming in here. Oh, right here. Shit, fuck me. Oh, yeah, look oh, at that yeah. thing. Oh, my oh, god. Everybody likes to discover new species. It's always fun. But as soon as you get down into the deep sea, it's actually kind of easy. <laughs> and that tells you something about the deep sea. We have not been there much. Holy crap. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. The technology opening up the deep is also opening up opportunity, not just to witness the diversity of life, but to glimpse vast amounts of rare mineral resources some of the world's most valuable metals can be found deep under the waves, a discovery that has begun to pique the interest of the global mining industry. The next frontier for mining is going to be in the ocean because there's a lot of these rare earth elements and minerals in the sea. The boldest of mining companies are heading to the deep, drawn by the allure of a new gold rush. But to exploit it, they're also beating a path to another strange new world. In an industrial estate in the north of England. SMD is one of the world's leading manufacturers of remote underwater equipment. This is one of our deep sea mining machines. It's a small prototype, so half the size that you would see. This is a remotely operated machine. It's working up to 4,000 meters depth in some of the harshest conditions known. We have a saying. It's not rocket science, it's much more difficult than that. The industrial technology the company has developed 
has made mining possible several kilometers beneath the ocean surface. We're talking about gold, copper, silver, wherever metals, cobalt, um, all of those resources are potentially very valuable. They're absolutely necessary for the future prosperity of humankind. With an estimated $150 trillion worth of gold alone, deep sea mining has the potential to transform the global economy. The companies that, that run these industries will be able to buy whole countries. So the value is, is almost immeasurable. But at what cost? With so much still to discover, mining in the deep ocean could have unknowable impact. There are so many secrets to be revealed. It's a very important and delicate balancing act. We are currently at a depth of 4,290 meters. That's not an octopus, is it? Looks like it. I have never, like, ever seen that one. <laughs> Excellent. It's not just life today that may need protecting. Reaching the deep ocean might just allow researchers to answer some truly fundamental questions. Hydrothermal vents, hot springs on the ocean floor, are cracks in the Earth's crust. Some claim they could help scientists glimpse the origins of life itself. One of the discoveries of the, the latter part of the last century was that there's these really hot vents coming out of the seafloor. We're at 3,200 meters. These vents have their temperatures, they're hundreds of degrees Celsius, okay, so they're really hot. And they created ecosystems down in the deep sea that are independent of sunlight. Every other life system on the planet, as far as we know, depends originally on sunlight. But this did not. At one point we thought, hey, I wonder if that's how life started. And the question is still pretty wide open. It's just incredibly exciting. We're trying to manage Spaceship Earth. We're traveling 67,000 miles an hour right now around the sun. Everything we've ever had, everything we ever will have is here. And we need to steward it and figure out how this thing works, how this spaceship works. And the challenge is to manage that system with us part of it. So if humanity, the modern world, and the natural world can coexist. We might still be years away from unlocking the mysteries of the deep. Even with the latest technology, this kind of exploration is always challenging. Watch the nav. Control, we have major problem. What's going on? We just started to rock. Copy. Stand by. Bridge, are we now? We're drifting straight east. Why don't you let Watch Lead know what's going on? We just lost DP. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? The ship lost DP. Roger that. Okay, so all hands, we are aborting the dive. We've lost DP. So we're terminating dive on S19 and recovering the ROV. We had to terminate because the ship lost its direct positioning. We couldn't just hold in place, which means you're then taking an expensive instrument and leaving it to the mercy of the currents, and you don't want to snag it. So that we'll have that ROV up on the deck set. As the crew of the Okeanos comes to terms with the scale of the challenge and the opportunity that lies beneath, what they and others discover could transform humanity's understanding of how to protect the ocean. It's the most hostile environment on Earth, but the keys to our future may lie in the deep.